Hey, take it easy over here. How the heck are you doing? <laughs> All right, that's a terrible Andrew Dice Clay. But today's going to be a fun one, Creepers. How the heck are you guys? It's Klairski. In 1993, Andrew Dice Clay came to Portland to film a movie with Terry Hatcher. That's right, 93, Portland, Oregon. Imagine Andrew Dice Clay creeping around the city. Today's going to be a fun one. I hope you guys stay tuned. Today is the filming locations to the 1993 classic comedy Brain Smasher. That's right. Starring Andrew Dice Clay. A true love story. Stay tuned. Now this is Portland, Oregon. I live here. This is where the rest of the story happens. End the setup. As soon as we get over the bridge, our first stop will be in Chinatown. Stay tuned. Alright, you guys, we made it into Chinatown. I love all these red street signs that have been here for years. Here's an iconic piece of Portland here. Chop Suey, Hung Flower Low. But our first location is going to bring us right around the corner here to the entrance of Chinatown. I believe it's this one. Here, you can see this really beautiful little entranceway here. And in the movie, you would have seen, like I said, this little entranceway here, all of this. And this building has changed over the last couple years. Uh, but you can see all this very prominently, including this big uh, round door frame here. All these poles are still here. Hasn't changed much, but Terry Hatcher's character would be running right through here. And you would see the, the ninjas chasing after them right about here. So right about here, you would have seen the ninjas chasing after Terry Hatcher and her friend. And then if you panned over here, this whole restaurant has changed. It used to have like a little blue and white awning over it. But if you look really close, you can still see this like ring thing. All these street lights are here. And then of course, it is daytime now, but during the shot it was all at night you can see all this really lit up back in here including the front here to this cool opening here to Chinatown also if you look really closely in the shot all this is lit up and if you look right down there you would have still seen the Chevron sign right about there the sign has changed but not the location. Pretty much everything's still in the same spot since 93. All right, let's go up to the next spot. I always like to show the front entrance here too, right off of Burnside with these big dragons, the one on each end. Little iconic piece of Portland. Surprised they didn't put this, this shot in as well. Probably harder to film on the busier street, but definitely been here for a long time. So as they were making their way out of Chinatown, pretty much away from the ninjas, they were kind of caught in a building and then they got into a fight and um, Andrew Dice Clay basically broke them out by kicking everybody's butts, but they were still being chased. So he jumped out of the building, which I was unable to actually locate, um, but I know the area where they actually jumped off the bridge onto the top of the max which is our transit train here um, in downtown Portland. Well, all over the metropolitan area, really. Um, but that location is just a block from here. They just recently put in a target, so I'm wondering if I can still get some of the same shots. Now, obviously, I don't have a crane and I don't have a drone, so I'm going to do my best to get the shots of kind of where they were. Most of them were on a platform. I'll show you guys when we get up here. All right, so with this new target being here, the little bridge kind of walk path here is still here and so Andrew Dice Clay's character would have been right up top here with Terry Hatcher they would have been looking that away the train would have been actually coming this way which now actually goes this way I don't know if they did it just for the movie but if you look up top here they would have jumped from right about here and landed down onto the train which would have been coming right through here 
And so this plank is still up there. I'm, I'm wondering if I can actually get up there and get the above shot. We'll see here. The other shot would have been right about here. You would have been able to look right through here. Um, they would have been standing right up top here on this bridge. Um, but if you look closely, I know it's during the day right now and these shots were at night, but you could see the corner here, this intersection, all these poles have, haven't changed. And in fact, you can still see this red building really good. Um, as of today, all that's changed is the proprietors of this business, but all this would have been the same. And Andrew Dice Clay and them would have been right up top here and they would have jumped right down here to the max, basically going that way and made a fresh getaway. Pretty cool. So some more camera trickery. When they were actually on top of the train, Andrew Dice Clay's character was standing up top. They were getting ready to get off. In fact, you can see both of these trees, this building, all the street signs. And if you look really closely, you can actually see that painting here on this Mexican food restaurant kind of like an Aztec painting right here. You can see that as they're on top of the train. The painting's still there. That's pretty cool. And this, like I said, this block really hasn't changed much. In the picture, or in the movie, if you will, you can see this was uh, Ray's Ragtime thrift store for many years. And the only reason why I know of this shot is because I actually worked down on 10th at a coffee shop. So I was, I recognized this little pull here. They've, they've reconstructed it over the years, but it's the pull that kind of holds the, the awning up. But you can see all this through here and the trees and everything like that. All right, off to the next shot. So if you look really close while they're on top of the max, there is a ton of things that go by. But if you look really closely, you can just barely make out the top pieces of these kind of like leaf art pieces you would have just caught basically right about here because the camera would have been placed on top of the train so you would only seen really the tops the only reason why i know is because i've seen this so many times just another little piece of history still here but they would have gotten off right about here and when the train pulls away you would have seen the Craig Walker sticker right right about here and on the second one over it actually said his name but as the train pulls away just like this you would have seen it just about right about there pretty cool all right you guys so I popped into Pioneer Square here or I'm sorry Pioneer what is it? Pioneer Place, the mall. And check it out. I was able to get more of like a bird's eye view. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait for the train to go by and then I'm gonna show you guys what it would have been kind of like, you know, the best I can. Obviously it's could have a drone. It's not 1993, don't have a crane handy. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys roughly where uh, Andrew Dice Clay and Terry Hatcher's character basically would have crossed right through here. And if you look closely, you can actually see this little overpass that we're standing on. But I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in as the max goes by and give you guys just kind of a you know a vague shot of the top of the train. Really, I thought it'd be kind of cool and just give you guys a different bird's eye perspective. It's pretty cool up here, anyways. It's uh, the third level here at the mall, and you can come up here and just kind of city watch. And the train runs on both sides. So I'm hoping that one will probably go by here soon. But like I said, the shots were a little bit farther down, but all through here, you would have seen, you know, the tops of these street signs or uh, street lights rather. All right, I'll, sh I'll show you guys here in one second. As soon as the train goes by. All right, so there's the max. They would have been riding right on top there. They would have been right on top here, making their getaway. <laughs> All right, our next spot brings us here to the Guild Theater, which in the movie, it's at night. I love this all lit up. It's, you can see it's the same uh, marquee all these years later. Terry Hatcher's character would have been standing right about, oh, right, right about where this last 
little block here would have been right on the corner roughly right about oh maybe one of these here and there would have been a payphone you don't really see much of those anymore but there would have been a payphone right about here and in the first scene before she actually stands in front of the theater the payphone actually would have probably been more on the corner because you can see this building very prevalent with these windows here and then at one point she's calling to check on her sister and the guy at the hotel tells her well we can come get you in a cab she says well i'm standing in front of the guild theater and then the camera pans over here now obviously these trees are blocking the view from here but you would have seen her on the phone and in the shot you would have seen that entire marquee and these windows and all these buildings basically with these you know oval structured uh, windows and things of that nature all the same and in the movie when they were filming either this tree wasn't here or it wasn't in bloom i have to compare the shots but she would have been standing back there at the phone and would have been right here and in fact this was not well this was the location that they used for the exterior shots but when they actually went inside is where they were actually inside of the Mary's Club, which is a, a dancer, a new, new dancing here in, in Portland. I think it's one of the oldest clubs here in Portland, if not Oregon. Uh, but you can see the, the Guild Theater right here. She would have went inside and then it would have panned to Mary's. But then they actually come back out after she interacts with Andrew Dice and the, the ninjas inside. Right about from this angle, you would have seen the orange dumpster would have been right about where this brick comes down from the marquee. Uh, but you would have seen Terry's character basically sitting or, you know, hiding in the orange garbage can right about here. And if you look over, you can actually see this wall here. And this is now a window, but would have been a doorway going in um, on either side. So... Right about here, Terry would have been hiding in the dumpster right in front of the Guild Theater. All these years later, I love seeing the same marquee too, that's so cool. When Terry's character comes walking up here from the payphone, she basically walks around this way and if you look up, all this is lit up. You can actually see those little checkered things behind the marquee as well. But right about here would have been that shot. And in a quick shot as Andrew Dice Clay and Terry walk up by Pioneer Clearhouse Square here you can just vaguely make out these white pillars I think there was more at the time oh I guess there is three still but you would have seen their characters basically walking up to go to Yamhill and at the time this back here was the Fox Theater but if you look really close you can actually see all three of these pillars in the shot Alright, so this makes more sense. The Lotus actually was in this block here on 3rd and Salmon and is completely gone now. So these are similar buildings to what was here. That's why at first I wasn't sure what happened. But if you look really closely, you can actually see that the buildings were really close. And in fact, when they, when they took the other building away, they must have sat really close to each other because you can actually see the walls kind of chipped here along the corner. But these windows all in the back here were the same windows of what Andrew Dice's apartment would have been right above, right above the old bar right there. In fact, I've been there many a times and <laughs> kind of glad those days are over. <laughs> so I can't get in here to get a really good shot here, but behind these, or behind this fence rather, is this big statue placard here this pillar right about here you can see Andrew Dice character and Terry basically walk right past this they go down that path and if you look really closely I'll see if I can zoom in it actually states erected by the citizens of Oregon and the camera would have been a lot closer, which is unfortunate I can't get in any closer, but you can actually read right there what it says as the camera kind of pans over. Right about here, they walk through that little pathway there, but you can see that and actually read it as well. Pretty cool. Too bad this is all fenced in though. That's gonna do it from downtown Portland.
not too much has changed since 1993. I can only imagine Andrew Dice Clay and Terry Hatcher running around town. Anyways, I love you guys. Make sure you hit that thumbs up. You can ring that bell. That way when I creep, you guys will be the first to creep. If you haven't subscribed, become a creeper today. Hit that red subscribe button. Creeper out for now. <laughs>